pokračovat bude už teď za pár vteřin Sofia Makanová, která se zaměří právě na generativní umění a konvergenci lidského a strojového nebo na humanizaci AI. Sofijná přednáška proběhne anglicky, ale Sofia souhlasila s tím, že ptát se můžete i česky, jakýmkoliv jazykem se ptát můžete. Užijte si to. Hi, uh, my name is Sofia and I study digital technologies in Umplum, which is Academy of Arts and Design here in Prague. And today I would like to introduce you a little bit of a topic about humanization of artificial intelligence in user interface. So I'll start. The potential of artificial intelligence is almost inexhaustible. And this is why it has covered so many areas of human life. Thanks to its phenomenal ability to learn, AI is getting better and better every day. It already is able to handle with such complex tasks as uh, image recognition and natural speech analysis. And this is just the beginning. This is how I feel. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. There are a bunch of interesting projects that show us how AI can make it easier to obtain desired information or to achieve the desired result faster than usual and often in a more pleasant way, which directly improves the quality of user experience. For example, the Google Magenta project allows you to generate melodic sequence or MIDI with just two clicks. User thus acts more as a conductor than a musician. He or she selects a set of instruments and determines the rules according to which the music piece should be created. It saves a lot of time and energy, so you can create a, or more focus on general concept, sound, and the mood of the music piece. This semi-creative, semi-generative approach contains an element of surprise, which is characteristic for a generative art in general. But it cannot be said for sure that the author's idea belongs to AI. I'm talking about this because many people are afraid that AI will take away their job in the future over time. And uh, according to the worst case scenarios, it will become so powerful and strong that it will get out of control enslave humans and destroy us as species. And uh, part of people see such threat in AI and reject this amazing technology. However, I'm a bit skeptical about attitude. Firstly, I would like to, um, to offer that it's worth drawing a line between AI depicted in pop culture and smart, however, still very modest algorithms of present. Because uh, behind such fears there lies a very, very complex philosophical question about consciousness. And uh, secondly, I believe personally that uh, the power of human imagination has no limits. And such dark, vivid and in general fascinating fantasies about our common future only confirms this fact. Um, the power of AI is uh, it's extremely strong cognitive abilities. It's able to store and process huge amount of data, which uh, human mind simply cannot grasp. But uh, by itself, it's not yet able to give any birth, uh, birth to any new meanings, unlike an ordinary human being as uh, you and me. And uh, we must not forget that AI is primarily designed to simplify routine tasks, mostly tasks that are silly. Algorithms are almost always created to facilitate labor processes or sometimes just to entertain people, to make them laugh. This is what AI is being developed for in favor of a human proactivity and not uh, with, the, with the aim to take its place. I believe that uh, people who stand behind these technologies, uh, nor certainly AI itself, has set such a cynical goal. And in my opinion, designers, of contemporary primarily should, pr primarily should consider AI as a, as a tool, 
as a technology that automates those workflows that are boring, mechanical or physically demanding. And I think that our task is to find cases uh, where this unique potential could be implemented. As a, therefore, it's, it's crucial for me today to show how a smart digital assistant can become a part of creative team. It's connecting center that serves the benefit and not against uh, human uh, creativity. So let's move on. And again, please. Yes. That's right. So I would like to introduce you a little bit of a theory. Digital human is an artificial ambassador for a particular service or brand, and it has a number of features that helps it to mimic natural human behavior. Digital people are virtual experts, chatbots, virtual models, and speaking differently, they are avatars that act as representatives of certain services. And humanization of AI is a set of technological and design solutions that contribute to appropriation of human qualities and skills to artificial system, which are necessary to successfully imitate natural human behavior. Good humanization output provides user with adequate response and uh, gives a desired, desired result according to the user requirements. Such algorithms are able to learn patterns of human behavior and to adapt to their needs. Yeah, now we can move on. So we are here. I'd like to say that contemporary UX design strives to achieve intuitive, fast interactions and easy communication, even with, with boys. But can you imagine that at the very dawn, computers did not even have a digital screen, mouse and keyboard. All of these as an input system that we are used to appeared with the generation of um, personal computers. And the first uh, mass-produced computer with a graphical user interface came with Xerox Star in uh, 1981. It came out with the slogan, a computer that speaks your language. And as the main feature of the new design was a desktop that simulated office environment. Its operating system uh, user experience was uh, based on interaction with files, folders, trash cans, windows that office employers were used to in real life. However, before this Windows Office approach, the most popular operating system was Unix. And the only input channel it had was a command line. And command line was used to communicate uh, with the hardware straightforward. As it was described by Linus Torvalds in his book, in order to interact with Unix through command line, the user had to rearrange his or her thinking the way they were capable to communicate with the hardware in almost computer's native language, the code. And this minimalistic, eclectic, and fundamentally simple Unix design carried a philosophy of direct interaction between human mind and the machine. Also, experience with such operating system was described by Torvalds as perfect harmony. But obviously, this kind of OS design worked only for a specific mindset. I see such computerization of human mind and humanization of computer systems as uh, two similar approaches. It is possible that the operating systems of the future will be mostly controlled by voice and gestures, or a little bit later by power of thought. In this case, over time, advanced personal AI assistant um, must, be gradually, must gradually become universal in terms of compatibility with other smart services and devices. They should be able to act outside the scope of a specific program or application. So therefore, an ecosystem of interconnected smart devices and services must be created. The wider this ecosystem will be, the wider the tools and um, uh, capabilities artificial intelligence will be able to use when solving user requirements and requests. And it is much more convenient to enter a task by voice. For example, 
Alexa, order a taxi for me and my husband and send my mom her favorite flowers this, this, uh, this week instead of ordering each service separately by hand. But uh, for me, it was interesting what will happen with the user experience if AI algorithm will become something more than a system. Yeah, we move on. Thank you. During year 2019, Art Lebedev Studio in Moscow, where I was employed at the time, sold logos created by designer Nikolai Ironov. His uh, eccentric work, uh, his fresh and generally courageous graphic approach was widely discussed in Russian media. And one year later, the studio revealed the truth about uh, Nikolai, about this designer. He was not a human being, but neural network. And it was a top secret project. His uh, fake data were written into internal system of the studio. He had a fake Facebook profile and he had um, fake um, photography on uh, the studio's website. Uh, studio employees have never met him personally. Uh, everyone thought he was something like a um, freelance designer ninja. However, we often discussed his works with a mixture of uh, excitement and envy. The amazing thing about this is that I really believed he was alive and he is still alive partly in my imagination. Because this project already has a strong story with the character that people trust. Personal attributes such as face and voice cause trust and empathy, which plays a huge role in perception of particular brand or product. Two dots and a line that resemble a face make people feel something. It can look funny and cute. But what if the object of humanization not only take a human face on, but also appropriates the main human ability, the ability to create, which is considering, uh, considered as something that distinguishes us from animals? And how can it potentially influence our self-identification in the future. I would like to argue about this. Um, we, modern people, are used to swipes, multi-layering and scattering. We want to fill quantity at the level of numbers and to choose from a large scope of options. And AI designer is able to provide a solution. It thinks, or more precisely, solves problems differently than human. Algorithm is not afraid of criticism. He does, uh, it does not feel any emotions, neither negative nor positive, and it is able to produce a huge amount of work very fast. I was really surprised by the fact that my design colleagues started copying uh, Nikolai's graphic style in, or in order to imitate him. They learned from him, and it seems remarkable because uh, after all, it uh, seems that it should be other way around, that algorithms should learn from people. But still, should humanized AI necessarily look like a human? There are two hypotheses about this. We can move on. Yeah, the first one is that smart algorithms of the future will become something like digital people or androids. And other version does not exclude a presence of body, but it's expected to be significantly different from the human one. Such a body can be, for example, a system of moving particles or a LED display. Such system would communicate with the user in language of color, motion, light, and different shapes. At the first glance, we would mostly, mm, most likely prefer to communicate and interact with the artificial but still present, Kara from Detroit, then with the invisible wallet Hal from Stanley Kubrick's universe. Yeah, we are moving on. Wow. However, the real circumstances are a little bit more difficult, not as much simple as they might seem. The main problem is so-called uncanny valley that was mentioned uh, in the speeches before me. It means that if something artificial looks or behaves roughly like a human, but not precisely, it affects uh, a discomfort and fear in human observers. 
And um, in February this year, actually, Epic Games uh, announced MetaHuman Creator software, which allows you to generate ultra-realistic 3D people in a procedural way. Before, it was a very time-consuming thing. It involved a lot of designer, big teams, and a lot of time uh, it took to create something. But, if, but still, it was not uh, as close to realism as it is for a moment. However, um, I wanted to test this uh, software immediately, so I asked uh, Epic Games to give me an early bird uh, for the demo, and I tried it. Uh, we can move on. My main intention was to recreate this uh, Nikolai Ironov designer as a digital human. And after a series of manipulation in the software, I um, realized that I'm satisfied with the level of detail it provided. However, it turned out to be that the uncanny valley effect is still, is still present. It's uh, more difficult to struggle with it uh, than I originally expected. Uh, especially animation did not look completely natural, so it was the problem. Like static images, uh, they were fantastic. And that's why I'm saying that the possibilities of modern graphics are truly impressive. However, the decision to use digital human in the UI is still questionable for me. And this is how I have um, started looking for a design case where the second approach could be implemented. So I have prototyped an application that uh, turns a smart speaker into a wireless pocket sound studio. I will tell you. Yeah. When I saw this Yandex smart station max for the first time, I thought that this smart uh, speaker is so loud, so powerful, and is able to transmit such a high quality sound. So it's uh, a shame I, I'm unable to plug my electric guitar into it. So I came up with the idea of uh, cre creating and prototyping an application that would allow musicians to control voices of their instruments by connecting them into the speaker via Bluetooth so people can play together like a band but wirelessly. As a musician, you definitely want to dedicate your hands exclusively to your instruments. And with voice commands, you can ask your smart assistant to turn on metronome, tuner, or even ask it to generate a rhythm as a musical accompaniment. And this way, your intelligent assistant can become almost a member of the band, a sound producer, and a wireless pocket sound studio, all in one. And the LED display uh, would show signals and gestures like palm waving, heart beating, or thumb up, something that we are used to. The smart, people, uh, smart speaker sorry, can also be taught to practice solfeggio with you in order to develop your musical hearing skills. And it can remind you that it's time to change strings on your electric guitar as, uh, as well, if you forgot to change them or did it a month ago. Just by voice, you can uh, just take a picture of a necessary product. If it's, for example, Yandex Alice, she has this skill that you're photographing something and she can put an order for you in the in the Yandex market because uh, that company they built and they, they are building actually right now an ecosystem of smart services and uh, their voice assistant is like a center of it and it's growing every day um, yeah but uh, speaking about this application it gives an ability to create an endless number of bands uh, with different people and quickly switch between your musical pedal chain effects and you can use different presets for virtual amplifiers. And it doesn't matter which geographical coordinates you have, you can simply synchronize two smart speakers and uh, play with someone from a different continent. So I thought that this zero touch strategy that uh, smart speaker allows is especially significant in the situation we are in right now. And I have to tell that the music equipment is very, very expensive, and it has a lot of wires if you have a sound studio at home. It's pretty difficult to carry out a very big amount of uh, heavy equipment if you suddenly want to play with your friends outside in the garden. And uh, we can move on. A voice interface, wireless connection, and easy-to-use smartphone application rather simplify than 
uh, complicate the concept of a sound studio of the future. It's not longer anchored to a specific physical space. It's compact, mobile, it lives both in smartphone and smart speaker. And musical instruments this, uh, thus become a part of Internet of Things. This case provided example of small situation where a humanized AI, the digital assistant, can help musicians with a um, combination of human speech recognition and generative skills. And uh, finally, I would like to share my vision that humanization of AI and the cyborgization of people are interrelated processes that will, uh, in the end, lead to a common center, the fusion of AI and people. However, in my opinion, AI should be humanized gradually by solving small, at first glance, insignificant uh, everyday tasks. I believe that designers should, should search for uh, such cases and apply the potential of AI in them. Internet of Things is the area where UX design meets high-tech engineering. And uh, as said, Le Corbusier, form should always follow the function. It may take decades uh, for personal assistant to become seriously full-fledged operating system. Um, so it will be able to solve some complex abstract user requests. However, in order to this be possible in the future, already today, there should be built this um, ecosystem of Internet of Things and smart services and uh, smart devices, and AI will gradually become the brain of this complex organism. So, that was it. Díky moc, Sofie. Má někdo z vás nějaký dotaz na Sofii? ať už česky nebo anglicky. Kdokoliv. Pokud ne, tak Sofii moc děkuju. Děkuju.